on singing loudly. Keep on singing loudly. Never turning back. Never turning back. I'm gonna keep on loving boldly. Keep on loving boldly. I'm on, I believe, black glasses. I am wearing a blue, a light blue shirt, a dark blue stole, and I probably black pants because I really can't tell the difference between navy and black. So <laughs> that is who I am. As we gather for worship, let's give a big Cedar Lane welcome to everyone here, especially our newcomers and guests, and join with each other by welcoming each other. Welcome.
of change and life from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known. We keep by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change and life from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now. It is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. Good morning, Cedar Lane, and thank you, Cedar Lane Quartet, for that beautiful gift and opening prelude. I am the Reverend Dana Edwards, and my pronouns are she and her. I am a cis white woman with short brown hair and glasses, and I'm wearing an orange skirt, a green shirt, and a stole with the words Shanti, Peace, Sipala. This is Reverend Abhi stole. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other side, Salam, Ashe, Salam. And as we gather this morning, let us pause to acknowledge that we are on the ancestral lands of the Nacotchtank and Piscataway Kanoi peoples, as well as the land where enslaved African people and their descendants toiled without choice or recompense. We honor their enduring presence, wisdom and stewardship of this land throughout the generations of the past and present and future. And this morning, we offer a heartfelt welcome to our newcomers and guests, whether you're joining us in person or online today. If you're new or still feeling new, please raise your hand or introduce yourself in the chat if you're joining us online. Just keep them up a little bit. We have a little gift for you. We, yes. So we'd like to acknowledge and greet you with a small token of our appreciation. Let us extend a warm Cedar Lane welcome to all our guests. <clears throat> After the service, we invite all newcomers and visitors to join us for fellowship and coffee. If you're interested in learning more about Unitarian Universalism or getting involved in our congregation, please take a moment to fill out the newcomer form linked in the chat if you are online 
and write in your bag that you just got if you're here and return it to one of our greeters. To stay updated on Cedar Lane's news and events, sign up for our weekly e-newsletter on our website's homepage at www.cedarlane.org. And if you feel called to deepen your involvement and contribute to our mission, we invite you to consider taking the next steps in your spiritual journey by becoming a member of Cedar Lane. Your presence enriches our community, and we will welcome you with open hearts. Our caring ministry team serves as an extension of the ministry here at Cedar Lane. Barbara Tomar, a dedicated member of the team, is available to offer you support in person. Oh, she's right back there. She's there. Oh, there's Barbara. <laughs> They're usually over there. Oh, it's oh. Angela. Hi, Angela. <laughs> Angela Wall, a dedicated member of our team, is here to offer you support. <laughs> And as we explore the theme of interdependence and belonging, we want you to know that the, in this inclusive community, we embrace you for who you are, whomever you love, wherever you find yourself on life's journey. And whatever your beliefs, sexual orientation, gender, identity, documentation status, or disability, you are warmly invited to bring your whole perfectly imperfect self here and join us in co-creating worship together. And in our Unitarian Universalist <laughs> tradition, we honor the inherent worth, dignity, and divinity of every person, valuing the unique perspectives of each individual. We're just gonna take a little break. Okie dokie. Unique <clears throat> perspectives of each individual and what they bring to us. We strive to live into the vision of beloved community together. And in this spirit, we gather. In this spirit, we begin. May it be so. And I just, I'll just note that um, we got a really cool new sound system with, as part of our renovation, right? Yes. And, um, and so, you know, there, there's some getting used to some kinks to work out. So we appreciate you hanging in with us as we figure out all those kinks and, um, and hopefully you'll have a more enjoyable experience altogether. We know you're here for connection and not for perfection, so. We got you. <clears throat> On that note, we are one. We are community. We are connected by blo blood and bone, mind and heart, and sometimes bricks and mortar. Like the finest woven tapestries of old and the spices blended and stirred into our family's recipes, our lives are intentionally intertwined. And we are made, no, no, we are fashioned into a stronger community by these connections. This interlacing, intertwining, and intermingling of our existence makes each of us whole. This interlacing of our lives makes us whole. Happiness and sorrow. This intertwining of our lives makes us whole. Blessings and burdens. This intermingling of our lives makes us whole. Lament and laughter. May we allow the magic and mystery often named spirit or God to make us and keep us connected long after today's service has ended. Come, let us worship together. Good morning. Good morning. I am Joe Del Sol, the worship associate for today's service. I'm a mid-40s white male with gray and brown hair and beard, glasses, wearing a green polo shirt and brown pants. My pronouns are he, him. In our Unitarian Universalist tradition, we illuminate a chalice as a beacon of our faith and community wherever we gather. As Lori Richardson 
kindles the chalice and joins us. If you're joining us online, please share in the chat where you are lighting your chalice from. If you are joining us in person, please rise in body and in, or in spirit to share the chalice lighting words. We light our chalice as one, a diverse group of proudly kindred spirits, here not by coincidence, but because we choose to journey together. We are active and proactive. We care deeply. We live our love as best we can. Thank you. Please remain as you are to sing Draw the Circle Wide. The lyrics are on the screen and attached to your order of service. Everyone, please join us for the chorus. This morning I'm wearing a cerise top and black pants um, and in need of a haircut. <laughs> 20 years ago, I began to wind down my professional life. It had taken me to cities and towns across the country where I formed a lot of friendships 
many of them quite lasting. Yet these friends were scattered widely. I needed to have a local community. I needed to learn how to be in community. That and a longing for spiritual connection led me to a UU church. Becoming involved in it did indeed foster a sense of community and many friends. A few years later, my wife and I joined Cedar Lane. Soon after, Reverend Abi asked us to help the board engage the congregation in visioning in hopes a clear direction would emerge. Funny, he kind of knew this had been my professional work. It led to Vision 2020, whose strategic directions were adopted by the congregation in the annual meeting at a unanimous vote in 2016. We've been implementing it ever since. Knowing that a vision without resources is a hallucination, I then became active in raising money to support the work of achieving it, the work of living out our mission of welcoming all, of championing for the rights of all. Raising money is probably the least alluring activity at any church. No one comes to church to say, I really want to raise money, I'll join a church. But it is vital to everything we do here, everything that attracts you and your family to Cedar Lane. We're once again engaged in the annual appeal to support the operating budget, the funds to keep the lights on, to heat and cool the building, to pay our gifted ministers and truly dedicated staff the fair wages that they deserve, in short, to make possible everything we do here. We don't receive support from some faraway UU treasury in the sky. You and I, all of you out there beyond these walls, we're it, the financial basis of all that's around us. Back to money in a moment. First, I wanna speak of another element of being part of this community, this life-affirming institution. Giving of ourselves, our time and talents. I can personally attest to the joy it brings to be involved here. For a decade now, Cedar Lane has been like a second home for me. I've been deeply engaged in helping us become the congregation we all long for, healthy, outwardly active, while serving all who seek respite, a spiritual home, and a welcoming community. I can attest personally to how fulfilling it is to be active here not just passively benefiting from our wonderful faith formation activities, all our whole lives, our life-changing sexuality teachings, our comforting pastoral care, but becoming part of all of it, rolling up your sleeves and saying yes to making this community yours. Little did I know how much meaning such involvement would bring to my life. Everyone here is stretched for time, I know that, and it's easy for retired me to say, do more. I'm saying it F-Y-O-J, for your own joy, as well as that of Cedar Lane. I've been privileged to have a hand in all stages of the renovation, the capital campaigns, planning for it, then the construction period. It's been one of the most fulfilling projects of my life. My career centered on helping communities come together to create a path and the momentum to overcome inertia and then take it. I was most often with the community in the early sort of gaseous stage that would eventually gel into commitment and lead, if they were lucky, to bringing vitality back to their town centers or to restoring an important building. But by then, my work had taken me elsewhere, to other communities. I never was around long enough to personally see the results. Being here in this newly renovated Welcoming building is the first time I can experience for myself the joy of actually seeing the results. Thanks to all of you and your generosity. Already I can feel the vibe of excitement as others grasp the potential the renovated building brings us and will bring to those who join us and follow us on Cedar Lane's promising path. It's a bittersweet moment for me though for with other younger leaders emerging, I'm now confidently stepping back, not stepping away, just back to being a member, 
to enjoying the choir. Thank you, choir. You're not here today, but thank you, quartet. <laughs> Several of the members I know are here, okay. Enjoying the choir, the kids in their haunted houses, the youth as they grow in our faith. I have two favors to ask of you. First, consider how you might become more engaged in the life of the congregation and volunteer. Find some small way to dip your toe in or boldly jump in with both feet. The joy it brings cannot be measured. I may be stepping aside, but what I'm not stepping away from is financially supporting our work. That brings me to the aptly named Building a New Way Pledge Drive. And the second favor I ask, make your pledge today. If you've already made it, be inspired to increase it. My big ask of each of you, from the top of the choir loft to the farthest row in the sanctuary, to all who are participating from home and around the world, many of you have been and are exceptionally generous to Cedar Lane. Others have not yet jumped on board. I dream that this year, in honor of our new beginnings in our 21st century building, everyone will take part. We're poised for an exciting future. It starts with your pledge, your financial support. Please make it to the best of your ability. Thank you for all you do to make love work at Cedar Lane.
Thank you so much. I, I hope you don't mind some backup singers. <laughs> I felt like I was at a concert for a minute. <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you. So you may notice on your order of service that we have something new there called Invitations to Involvement. Mm -hmm. Because we're part of a spiritual community, we have more than just pff, announcements. Absolutely. <laughs> In our worship service, announcements are not merely updates on events and activities. They are invitations for involvement and engagement. Mm -hmm. Each announcement is an opportunity for members and friends to participate in the life of the community, to contribute their talents and energies to shared endeavors, and to deepen their connections to one another. Yeah, I agree, Dana. And we extend a heartfelt thank you to the 140 Cedar Lane households that have pledged their support in this year's annual fund campaign, bringing us $539,000 towards our $950,000 goal. We would also like to acknowledge the nine new pledgers this year, not by name, but just take a moment to say thank you for taking the risk to share your resources with us for the first time and in this way. You've taken an important and vulnerable step to deepening your ties to this community, and we sincerely thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you've yet to become a first-time pledger, there is still time. Absolutely. Your generosity, the generosity of all who have pledged so far, is truly appreciated. To reach our goal, we aim for 100% participation from every member and friend of our community. Your pledge helps sustain our mission, our ministries, support our staff, and fund new programs like Welcome Wednesdays and Family Fridays, which we will be launching in the fall. Yes, we will. It will be fun. If you haven't yet pledged, please consider doing so online or at the table after the service. Your support ensures that Cedar Lane remains a beacon of hope and inclusivity for all. Mm -hmm. And if you're ready to get your party on, Get ready for Cedar Lane's homecoming spring auction celebration on Saturday, May 11th at, from 4.30 to 7.30. It's going to be so awesome. Mm -hmm. If you were there last year, you already know. And if you weren't, ooh, get prepared. <laughs> we're gearing up for a grand success, and we do need your help. Consider offering dinners, vacation homes, artwork, lessons, gift certificates, and more. And... Um, Ali and Lalitha, our senior minister, and his wife were actually in Portugal this last week. And so, not be. <laughs> so when they come back, they can tell you all about the uh, Portugal condo offered from June 18th to 20, the 26th this year. So stop by the auction table after service to sign up. And one more surprise cool thing. What's that? For the youth, we will have a video game bus. Video so. game bus, <laughs> boo, boo, boo. It's going to be so great. With, of course, church-appropriate video games. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and we have two very cool events happening after the service today. So I, I definitely think you all should check these out. After the service today, you're invited to the Chalice House main room to join Magda de la Paz Cab Cabrero. Sorry. She is a Cedar Lane member and a leader of the Journey Women group who will present her new book, Walking on Earth with Thich Nhat Hanh. It's her journey from a girlhood in Puerto Rico to finding her spiritual home in Buddhism. And I think this is pretty cool too. In the lower level of the parking lot, the environmental justice team will be sharing how to engage in the spiritual practice of composting. Mm -hmm. So. Both of these things are wonderful, and one of them is definitely something that if you're not doing, you might need to go learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, let us move into the space for naming and sharing the joys and sorrows of our community and beyond. Let us center ourselves and enter into this moment, calling upon all the sources of love that are within, among, and around us. 
We lift up those in our community who are living through significant changes. The small and extraordinary milestones of life, we pause to be present to our spiritual companions and to the concerns of our own hearts. Within our Cedar Lane community, we hold in our hearts Karen, Yano's family, and friends as they grieve. Karen was a longtime member at Cedar Lane. At CLUUC, she worked in religious education and long-range planning for many years. She and her husband, David, proudly raised their children in the Cedar Lane community. They moved to Seattle eight years ago to be closer to family in their retirement years. She passed away on April 9th, 2024, surrounded by family who love her. We offer congratulations to Peach and Bob Giannisi. Peach and Bob got married on March 26th in Bangkok, Thailand. Parents Linda and Leonard Giannisi are planning a visit later this year to celebrate with them. <laughs> Our caring extends beyond Cedar Lane, embracing those affected by loss, conflict, and calamities across our world. In our hearts, we hold the memory of all the lives lost in the ongoing violence in Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Haiti, Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Our hearts are especially with those impacted by the escalated violence in the Middle East. We also carry those who have been wounded, both physically and spiritually, as well as those consumed by indescribable anguish over the loss of their loved ones. May our friends, companions in this world, and all the joys and sorrows in our hearts find solace within the embrace of silence and prayer. As we enter the silence together, you are invited to rise in body and or in spirit and speak the names of the loved ones that you are holding in remembrance or share their names in the chat. Please be seated. Divine source of love and compassion, in this sacred moment of connection, we come together as a community with heavy hearts, burdened by the weight of violence and discord in our world. We lift up our voices in prayer seeking solace and guidance in the midst of turmoil. May our hearts be filled with compassion as we condemn the senseless acts of violence that tear at the fabric of our humanity, causing suffering and pain. Grant us the strength to stand against the destructive forces of war, violence, and division. We seek the wisdom to embrace all beings with kindness and understanding. Grant us the courage to walk the path of compassion, seeing the inherent worth and dignity in every soul we encounter. We grieve for those who have been harmed, for those who have lost loved ones, and for the wounds inflicted upon our collective humanity. Help us to recognize the interconnectedness of all life and to work tirelessly for peace, both within ourselves and in the world around us. Grant us the wisdom to recognize the root causes of violence, whether they be in our thoughts, our words, or our actions. May we have the courage to confront injustice wherever it may be found, wherever it may be found, wherever it may be found, and to work tirelessly for peace and reconciliation. Help us to cultivate hearts of compassion and empathy, understanding, and joy, so that we may see the humanity in all people and seek common ground, even in the midst of conflict. 
guide us in building bridges of understanding and healing that we may overcome the divisions that separate us and embrace the beauty of our diversity. May our prayers be a call to action, inspiring us to be agents of peace in a world too often torn apart by violence. Let us be instruments of your love, spreading kindness, justice, and reconciliation wherever we go. In this moment of reflection and prayer, may we find strength, hope, and renewed commitment to the path of peace. Amen, ashe, and blessed, blessed be. Please join the Cedar Lane Quartet in praying for peace through song by singing Peace, Salam, Shalom, written by Emma's Revolution. Thank you, Reverend Ali, for that prayer and for the prayer of song. Thank you very, very much. As we come together every Sunday during worship, we come to lift up our community through the act of sharing the plate. Our Share the Plate offering is an opportunity to support the mission and ministry of Cedar Lane, as well as an organization that aligns with our values and work to build a more just and inclusive world. Today, we share the plate with the UUA Disaster Relief Fund. Our Disaster Relief Fund is part of a covenant a covenant between the UUA and congregations, between congregations who give generously to those in need and with our community partners. Through aiding our congregations, their members, and their community partners, we are able to embody our faith and our values. <clears throat> Disasters impact our congregations and their communities with incre increasing rapidity. From natural disasters like wildfires that scorch everything in their path and hurricanes that bring destruction through winds and water to widespread human-caused disasters like the collapsing infrastructure that we saw in the Flint water crisis. Our congregations, our people, our communities sustain the impact of those calamities. Your donation to the UUA Delaster Relief Fund allows the UUA to respond flexibly on your behalf to tra tragedies that overtake us. With your donations, we are able to provide assistance to congregations, their members, and their communities. 
disaster relief fund grants are designed to respond to the widespread damage that has received a disaster declaration from FEMA or local government sources. So this morning, you can give by texting CLUUC and the dollar amount you would like to give to 73256. You can give online or on PayPal or by mailing a check to the church or placing your gift in the offering plate. However you choose to give, we are thankful for your generous support. The offering will now be gratefully given and received. I 
Now this will come as no surprise after hearing that song, but um, it turns out this world is filled with special beings. And we're all grappling our way through the anxiety of solitary conundrums and tasting the occasional reprieve of connection. When you realize this, your body lets out a breath and relaxes. The curse lifts. You come in from the cold. You hold out your cup and some other special being fills it with sweet and milky spice tea with fragrant herbs. You drink. Our way the way of the feminine divine is to find out what everyone is good at and praise them for it and get them to teach it to one another. Maybe you know something about the hidden meanings of the Hebrew letters or how to build a sustainable home from recycled tires and rammed soil. Or maybe you know a loving kindness meditation. You, the one who knows the Islamic call to prayer, climb that minaret and call us all to prayer. You, the one who knows how to sit quietly at the bedside of the dying, show us the way to bear witness. You, the one who knows how to get us to wake up to the shadows of privilege, please wake us the heck up. It will be chaotic, all this community building but your cooperation will save the world. Besides, it'll be fun. So let us rise in body and spirit to sing courageously with and to each other to fortify ourselves for the beautiful chaos of creating connection and belonging, singing, courage, my friends, and the lyrics will be on the, slide, on the screens. It's a little bit of a call and response for those who are not familiar with this one. So I'll sing and then you'll repeat and then we'll join in at the end of the phrase. Courage, courage, my friend, my friend, you do not walk alone. We will, we will go with you, go with and sing your spirit home. Hold on, hold on, my friend, my friend, you do not hold alone. We will, we will go with you, go with you, and sing your My friend, my friend, you do not wait alone. We will, we will wait with you, 
wait with you and sing your spirit home. Sing out, sing out, my friend, my friend, you do not sing alone. We will, we will sing with you, sing with you. And sing your spirit home. Courage, courage, my friend, my friend, you do not go alone. We will, we will go with you, go with you, and sing. Before she became a minister, my colleague, the Reverend Tandy Rogers, was one of those super volunteers in her mid-sized congregation. She was on every committee, and she volunteered with the youth, and she had held every lay leadership position at the church except for a board member. And she was happy to do so. That way, she could make sure everything was done right. Now, when she tells this story on the UUA website, she doesn't say it, but I sense that Tandy was trying very hard to fit in at church. As I read the story, it sounded to me as if she was trying to create a faith community that was just right, so that she could finally feel like she belonged. And perhaps she thought if she just did all the things, people would see that she had a purpose in her community and that she was enough. Tandy, at that moment in her life, was living into what author and speaker Ritu Basin calls your performing self. You know, that armor that we all put on at times when we act out of positivity, perfection, and achievement, or what she calls PPA. After reading Basin's book, We've Got This, Unlocking the Beauty of Belonging, I now have this vision that we're all, to some extent, both Clark Kent and under our quiet demeanor and dress, we all have this like superhero suit that says PPA on it. And, we, and when we feel like we have to fit in instead of belonging, we go to a phone booth if, those still existed, just pretend they still exist. <laughs> and we change into our PPA costume. But fitting in and belonging aren't the same thing. In fact, according to Brene Brown, a belonging expert, fitting in and belonging are actually opposites. She says our yearning for belonging is so hardwired that we often try to acquire it by any means necessary, including trying to fit in and hustling for approval and acceptance. And theologian Cole Arthur Riley puts it this way, our pining for belonging can do frenetic things to the soul. We can become so desperate for connection that we make havoc from all the hungry parts of ourselves. And yet, she says, we are made for belonging. We are made for belonging. But when we move from that place of clinging to our PPA costume, wearing our positivity, perfection, and achievement costume, we are living into a place of trying to fit in. Like Tandy Rogers when she was super volunteer at our church. And the thing is, we are often praised and rewarded for it, right? 
especially for those of us who live around and work in the Beltway, we actually, you know, we wear our PPA superhero costumes with pride, and we get our kids fitted with their costumes basically at birth. We have sweet little babies wearing positivity, perfection, and achievement onesies, right? And if it's not you, you know someone who does. Like many of us, at that moment in Tandy's life, parts of her identity were so deeply wrapped around the way she performed that she was totally okay with it. At least, she thought she was. <clears throat> Then, she says, one bright and sunny Sunday, the president of the board and the minister called me up to the chancel during the announcements. The minister gave me a beautiful carved chalice, and the president, putting his hand firmly on my shoulder, said, Tandy, you have served this religious community well with your extended service. And he went on to list the achievements I've, I've achieved, the committees I've chaired, and the projects I've headed up with our, over the most recent years. And he said, we are giving you a volunteer sabbatical for an entire year. <clears throat> you are not allowed to chair or volunteer for any committee. You are not even allowed to make coffee. I know. And this year, he told her, we ask that you just, compli is just simply come and be fed. Her minister and board president gave her an involuntary volunteer sabbatical. Now, when I first read that, the recovering positivity perfectionist and achiever in me did a little flip in my stomach and my throat tightened up, truly. My first thought was, well, if she's not volunteering, who will she be in that faith community? And Tandy did grieve. She talks about going through all the stages of grief. She started with denial. Surely they didn't mean that she couldn't hang with the youth, right? Yes, they did mean even a sabbatical from youth group. She felt angry and depressed, and there was also some bargaining, like when a greeter position suddenly opened up. At least she could help with that, right? Or like put out the hymnals, right? <laughs> nope. The whole congregation, even the hospitality team, insisted that she rest and enjoy worship. Now, before we go any further, let me reassure you that our ministry team and our board will never <laughs> publicly declare without warning that any of you take a volunteer sabbatical. <laughs> it is part of our shared ministry together to help you in your discernment journey, though. To help you find where your gifts best fit in this community like Abi did with Mary Means, as we heard earlier. He listened deeply to what filled her cup, what brought her joy, and what she was good at. And he invited her to engage her strengths and her talents in that area of the community. Our ministry team and our faith community are here to do that with each and every one of you. So when I was studying education, my professors, professors taught us about a way of thinking about human development that was different from the linear thinking of human development that we learned in a Eurocentric view. They taught us about a theory of development called the circle of courage. And it was developed by Larry Brentro, Martin Brokenleg, and Stephen Van Bockern. The circle of courage was developed by engaging, engaging with indigenous cultures and wisdom to create a strength-based resiliency model of development for native youth who are considered by others to be at risk. In the circle of courage, each of us has four points on the circle that are all interconnected. Mastery, independence, generosity, and belonging. And according to Brentro, Brokenleg, and Van Bockern, belonging 
is the universal longing for human attachment that is met through relationships and respect so that the child can say and the person can say, I am loved. In their model, when there is a traumatic event, the circle is broken and maladaptive ways of functioning develop until the circle is mended. For example, if the circle is broken in the area of independence, someone may develop codependency or learned helplessness. And living in the 21st century in the US, we've all experienced bumps, bruises, and breaks in our circles of courage. The key to their model of development is that our circles can be mended and eventually healed. There are no lost causes. No one, not one person, is irreparable. In that way, their development model has a universalist theology underlying it. So in our positivity, performance, and achievement culture, in the Beltway, on the other hand, we're encouraged to do everything and be everything to everybody. To do all the things to prove ourselves and to each other that we are enough. Our PPA culture makes little tears and sometimes huge rips into the belonging part of our circle of courage mainstream media, social media, and sometimes even our peers and friends will reward us for fitting in and encourage us to keep our authentic selves hidden away. But we exist as a faith community to embrace a counter-cultural narrative. We are here to assure each other that no matter what we do or don't do, whether we achieve or fail, we are enough just as we are. If you take nothing else away from this co-created worship experience today, remember this. You are enough. Sitting here, right now, just being you. When Tandy's minister invited her into a year of sabbatical, he was, in fact, inviting her into a spiritual practice of belonging. True belonging, according to Brene Brown, is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being a part of something and also standing alone in the wilderness. True belonging does not require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are. A simpler way to remember it, which Brene Brown quotes from a child is, if I get to be me, I belong. If I have to be like you, I fit in. Often, belonging doesn't just happen. Belonging requires self-awareness and courage and authenticity. It requires us to shed both our Clark Kent and our superhero personas and to get to know that beautifully complex and complicated soul that's hiding underneath. The funny thing is, is the best way to get to know that a gorgeous and authentic and courageous soul that lives inside each of you is by being in community with each other. And faith communities, when they are at their very best, offer opportunities to get, your, get to know yourself by getting to know others. The miracle of a strong and healthy faith community is that the deeper you go, the deeper you can go. That is, you don't have to spread yourself wide like English ivy or dandelions, both of which are beautiful and also can strangle out new growth. You can plant your roots deep. You can join one small group ministry, um, like a soul circle group, or you can join the choir, or you can take one adult faith formation class, or take part in one committee meeting and watch the alchemy of belonging happen. 
But Reverend Dana, some of you are saying in your heads, what if I join a group and I don't feel like I belong? There may, there's not a lot of people here, you might be thinking, who look like me or are the same age as me or share my like medieval niche interests in medieval history of Persia. So to that I say, belonging is not about finding people who look like you or even necessarily think like you. In fact, the experiences of belonging that have been most meaningful to me in the past few years have been in interfaith settings, like my work with the ceasefire movement or the Poor People's Campaign. I live in a community where most of my neighbors have more melanin in their skin than I do. We don't look alike. But I feel I belong in that neighborhood right now more than I felt I belonged anywhere I've lived in my whole life. And when I was in my early 20s, a time in many of our lives when we're struggling to fit in as we figure out how to belong, I found my deepest sense of belonging in the international dorm in college, where everyone was from different countries and cultures, and Selena would be blasting from one room, while Arabic hip-hop would be blasting from another room. Because, as Ritu Bisan says, Belonging is the profound feeling of being accepted and honored for who you are, especially for what makes you different. By yourself, being honored by your own self and by the people who you choose to bond with. This is the work of the faith community to accept and honor ourselves and others, not for the ways in which we are the same, but for the ways in which we are beautifully and exceptionally and miraculously different. And this means peeling away our positivity, perfection, and achievement costumes the way Tandy had to, and it, even when it feels painful and brings up feelings of grief or loss. But you know what comes at the last stage of grief? Acceptance. And after a year of involuntary volunteer sabbatical, Tandy had done some deep spiritual work. And while she did that work, she had been held by a boundaried and loving faith community. They had allowed her to find her spiritual practice of belonging. They had gently and faithfully mended her circle of courage. She says, like a veil lifting, it finally occurred to me that this is my life, my time, my agenda. I get to choose. Color came back into my cheeks, she says, as I spent downtime dancing in the kitchen with my children. I made homemade meals and started teaching them family recipes. I picked up my sketchbook and filled it with images for my own personal amusement. A calm emerged and I could easily locate my center. She goes on to talk about how she had unwittingly grown kind of resentful of all her responsibilities at the church. And in her absence, new ways of being and a new energy had developed in the congregation as well. Having a year to reflect on that helped her see which parts of her church life fed her soul. And it turns out, it was making coffee and weeding the garden. So when we take time to develop a spiritual practice of knowing ourselves and the complex tapestry of our identities, then we can connect with others in ways that create a deep sense of belonging for both ourselves and for others. So let's stop polishing our positivity, perfection, and achievement badges. Let's also release our quiet and unassuming Clark Kent fitting in selves and dig deeper. Let's cherish the richness and depth, the deliciousness of our identities. And when we think we've found the end of the tunnel, let's remember that our spiritual practice of belonging is a lifelong journey. A journey that cannot be traveled alone. So let's do it together. Besides, it'll be fun. Now join me to rise in body and spirit to sing hymn number 368, Now Let Us Sing.
Now let us sing to the papa. Now let us sing to the papa. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Sing, now let us sing. Sing, 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 Our closing words are from Reverend Hope, Reverend Dr. Hope Johnson. We are, you may be seated, we are one, working and eating and laughing, playing and singing and storytelling, sharing and rejoicing, getting to know each other, taking risks, opening up, questioning, seeking, searching, trying to understand, struggling, making mistakes, paying attention, asking questions, listening, living our answers, learning to love our neighbors, learning to love ourselves, apologizing and forgiving with humility, being forgiven through grace, creating the beloved community together. We are one. Let us go and create beloved community together. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds which had me blind. Gonna be a bright, sunshine day. I think I can make it now, the pain is gone. And all of those bad feelings have disappeared There is the rainbow I've been searching for It's gonna be a bright, sunshiny day Gonna be a bright, sunshiny day Look all around me, nothing but blue sky Straight ahead, nothing but blue, blue sky. I think I can make it now, the pain is gone. And all of those bad feelings have disappeared. I can see clearly now the rain has gone Gonna be a bright sunshine day Bright sunshine day Bright sunshine day Bright skies, nothing but Thank you.